سيئاتنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعت فإن خير الكلام كلام الله جل في العلا وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We were talking about last week how Surah Al-Fatiha that it contains the whole Quran in that Surah as we just said that Surah Al-Fatiha was why it's considered the greatest surah in the Quran in which no surah or no prayer that the ibad that they perform except a recitation of it is what causes that ibadah or that prayer that one performs to be valid. And if one does not recite Surah Al-Fatiha as we know, then one's salah is batila. That we know his prayer is invalid. As we said, Ya Ma'ash al-Ikhwa, that Surah Al-Fatiha the whole Qur'an has been generalized in Surah Al-Fatiha based upon the three categories that we mentioned. The Surah Al-Fatiha breaks down the three categories. Number one is Tawheed. As all three categories of monotheism is mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha. Al-Rububiyah, Al-Uluhiyah, Al-Asma, Al-Sifat. All of it is in there. And then we said that you have the second category which is taught, called Targheeb. Targheeb. Meaning what one, if he sticks to it, and he stays steadfast upon it, a particular matter, he will earn a reward. He will earn a reward. Either Allah, to be with Ta'ala, giving him a reward for that act or that good deed or that thing that he did that was in accordance to what Allah legislated, or inshallah, paradise in the hereafter. That's the meaning of targhib, what you will earn as a reward. What you will earn as a what? As a repayment in regards to something good in which Allah will prepare for those who cling to these matters in this world and in the hereafter. That's the meaning of tarheeb. Then you have tarheeb. That's the third category which is mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha. Tarheeb is what if you now commit it, or if you do it, you will earn an evil deed. Or, and what could be the repayment, is that one can enter the hellfire if one does it. So you have those three categories which are mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha. Number one is Tawheed, which is the head of all matters. Meaning Tawheed and Tawheed doesn't have any relevance at all if you did not actualize the first category, which is the monotheism of Allah, unification of him and his worship. So the second two have no relevance at all unless the first affair has been what? Actualized and carried out properly. So you have the one, which is the Surah Al-Fatiha, Tawheed. Then you have Tawheed. Then you have Tarheeb. Those three categories are in Surah Al-Fatiha. So now let's go to the Qur'an itself. The Qur'an itself comprises of nine categories, as we mentioned. And all those nine categories go back to those three categories. For Allah to be with Ta'ala, number one, of course we know in his book, he number one speaks about halal and haram. And we know halal and haram has no relevance unless you, unless you actualize firstly what? The monotheism of Allah. So now you can now abstain from all the, all the haram meat in the dunya for your whole period of duration of your life. If you did not actualize the monotheism of Allah, it has no relevance. It's invalid. It has no benefit. If you commit and set up partners with Allah, where you believed in omens, you believe, and you practice, practice magic, you believed in the stars, you believe in bad luck, you believe in omens, and you, pr- you practice worshiping the dead and worshiping shaitan. All those are the type of polytheism, or worship the sun, or worship Jesus, the son of Mary, or worship Allah, what Allah created. 
If you did not actualize monotheism, if you abstain from everything that was a halal or a haram in the dunya, it has no relevance. It's insignificant. So number one, as we said, if you go back to the Quran, the Quran breaks down the nine categories. The first category is halal. Halal and haram. For if a person indulges and he sticks to and he clings to what Allah made halal and lawful, he will attain a reward, which goes back to whatever you want in Surah Al-Fatiha. Targhib. Targhib. And Surah Al-Fatiha claims it has targhib in it, what Allah Ta'ala says, Sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim. We're asking you to keep us, keep us firm, O Allah, upon the straight path. The path in which you have bestowed those that what? You have bestowed upon the Nabiyeen, with Siddiqeen, with Shuhada, with Salihin. From the prophets and the messengers and the martyrs and those who are righteous, that straight path that you have bestowed upon them and which you have given them of knowledge and kept them firm upon, bestow that same ni'mah upon us, which is in regards to targhib. Meaning those from the past who, who had clung to, or they had remained steadfast upon what was that one path, they retained a reward, or they attained a reward with Allah. So that's targhib. Then you heard what happened with the Christians and the Jews in the last part of Surah Al-Fatiha. Sirat al-ladina an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa al Not the path of those who have earned your anger, nor those who went astray. That's tarheeb. So now let's go back to the Quran again. Halal is tarheeb. Because everyone knows in this room, if you stick to what Allah has made lawful for you, you will earn a reward. And in the hereafter, inshallah, you will earn paradise. And if you fall into tarheeb, meaning if you fall to haram, what Allah has made forbidden and unlawful, and it's binding upon all the ibad to stay away from, you will earn an evil deed or possibly subject yourself to the punishment of Allah in the hereafter. That's tarheeb, in which Allah has given us and instilled fear in us not to indulge in what he has made forbidden and what he has forbade. Now this is the next category. And all of that, like we said, keep in mind, all these categories go back to Surah Al-Fatiha. The whole Quran itself goes is in generalized in Surah Al-Fatiha. So the first category is halal, haram. You have the second category, which is in the Quran, which goes back to Surah Al-Fatiha. The second one, which is, which is called muhkam and mutashabih. Muhkam and mutashabih. Muhkam that Allah Ta'ala has revealed ayat. And this is very important because here manifests the methodology of minhaj al-salafi. That those who went astray in the past, and likewise those who are going astray today, did not cling to this correct path. They went astray in this regard, and as a result, they deviated, or some of them apostated. Allah Taala mentions this in the Quran and other places, and especially in Surah Al Imran. Allah Taala says in His book, "Who is the Anzal Alayk Al Kitab? Minhu ayat muhkamatu hunna umul kitab." وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتِ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغِ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْ إِبْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِهِ وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلٌّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Allah Tabiri wa Ta'ala has now also said in his book there's another category that goes back to Surah Al-Fatiha. This category is called Muhkam Mutashabih. What is Muhkam? Muhkam is that Allah is saying in his book, he is the one that has revealed to you the book. Verses that he revealed that are Muhkam. And there are verses that he revealed that are Mutashabih. As for those who follow what is Mutashabih, for those who have a sickness and the disease in their heart, they follow that was mutashabih in order to cause fitna, to cause confusion, and cause dissension, and cause people to deviate, and to cause people to go astray. Utilizing the verses in the book of Allah in order to twist and alter the meaning 
so they can make the people attain an evil understanding, which as a result of it, they go astray and they deviate. Those who follow the ayat, that are mutashabih, they follow it in order to cause fitna. And also to exceed, and also likewise to explain the ayat in the improper way, other than the way in which Allah revealed. Meaning that they explain the ayat in the book of Allah, according to their desires or according to what opposes what Allah sent down. We know the hadith of the Prophet when he thought of Uqba ibn Amr, that the Prophet والسلام, said, they said, Halaku ummati fil kitabi wal laban. Kalu amal kitabu wal laban ya Rasulullah. Fakala amal kitab. Fayakra un al Quran. Fayata awaluna hu ala gayrima anzalallah. Wa amal laban. Fayahibun. Fayadaun al juma. Fayadaun al jamaat wal juma. We yukdun. Now the message of Allah self that the hadith which has also been authenticated by the great Imam al-Albani. That he mentioned in this silsil al-ahadith al-sahiha and also who said it's, it's authentic as al-Hafid ibn Hajj al-Asqalani. He said that the destruction of my ummah is because of the kitab, because of the Quran, because of the book. Ah. Why, O message of Allah, what's the reason? Let's listen to what he says. They will read the book. And they will misinterpret it in a way other than how Allah revealed it. Meaning that Allah Ta'ala revealed ayat in his book. There will be people who will come and they will not interpret it in which Allah intended it in his messenger. And as a result of it, people will go astray and they will be led astray. And they will be destroyed because of it. They will read the Quran and they will misinterpret it in other than how Allah revealed that will be the destruction of people who are, who will now fall into destruction, which the Messenger of Allah said they will be destroyed because of this. Now let's get back to the ayah. The Messenger of Allah, oh Allah Tabriq wa Ta'ala says in his book, he has revealed ayat in his book that are muhkam. There's others that's mutashabi. Those who follow what is mutashabi, they only follow to cause fitna, cause trials and tribulation and confusion amongst the people. And also to misinterpret the ayats and the verses. No one knows the correct interpretation except Allah. And those who are well grounded in knowledge upon the recitation. Meaning that Ya Ma'ashul Ikhwa, the reason for why the Christians and the Jews and those from the other sects from the past went astray, they went astray because they didn't stick to what was muhkam. They thought they what? They stuck to what is mutashabih. Allah Ta'ala, what is upon the Muslim is to believe this, is that Allah, when he revealed the Qur'an, and he revealed the authentic sunnah, Allah protected not only the Qur'an from being, alt- being, on, being, tr- being uh, twisted and altered and changed. Allah protected the Qur'an from being changed. He protected the, also the sunnah from alterations and changes. Not only that, you also believe firmly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also preserved the understanding of how he wanted his kitab and sunnah to be what? Understood. Which is tremendous. And that is the furqan, what distinguishes us between, between us and those of the past. As far as the Christians and the Jews, their book has been altered. It's been changed. And on top of that, they have no resource or authentic resource to return back to in order to understand those verses properly. So that's the reason why, as a result of it, you'll find that if you get a bunch of people from the book and gather them in one room, every one will say, I understand this verse to be this way. I understand this verse to be that way. I understand this verse to be this way. I understand that verse to be that way. I understand this to mean this and that to be that. Allah saved us from that. Not only has their book been changed, but there is no authentic resource for them to return back to in order to interpret those ayats in a proper way. It's lost. It's done. Which came as a result of it, not only did they deviate, they also fell into kufr. And I'm going to give an example of this. So they fell into what is what? Mutashabi, trust me. And which I'm going to explain, inshallah. As for the Ummah Muhammadiyah, the Ummah of Muhammad, 
Allah protected this ummah from everyone else what they fell into in the past. The Quran has been preserved. The authentic sunnah has been preserved. And also the fahm and the understanding of the kitab and sunnah has been preserved. And the resource of what we return back to in order to untain the proper understanding of those verses and also the authentic sunnah is all there. However, it's important upon one to study, to educate himself so he can attain the proper verses and the proper interpretation. But the difference between us and them from the past, they don't have it. It's not there. The Ummah Muhammadiyah, it's there. It's been preserved. And it will be preserved all the way up to the day of resurrection. So a person might ask, why do we have deviant sex on the Muslims day? Simple answer. And if you want to say it just to be frank, they just want to be buck. They just want to follow their desires. Not because the preservation of the proper understanding is not there. They just chose to follow their desires. That's it. It's simple. But now, how can you now compare people who have the preservation of their book and their sunnah and their understanding in comparison to people where everything has been distorted? There is no comparison. There is no comparison between the two. So the reason of why we have deviant sex in Islam is not because the preservation of the book or there's some distortion in the sunnah or there's some, there's some lost resource in the understanding of it that we can return back to. That we can return back to. Which as a result of it, like we said, what came as a result of it, the people of the past went astray. But the Muslims of today deviated. Not because the resources had not been preserved, because they chose to follow their desires. That's the reason why Allah Tabriq with Ta'ala says in his book, Ibitira al Fitna, Wabitira al Tawili. They wanted to change and follow what is Mutashabi. Following their desires, brothers and sisters, there's no deviant sect out there from the Christians and the Jews and even the Muslims, except that they fell into this what Allah, what Allah has prohibited in this ayah of them following their desires and misinterpreting verses. Misinterpreting verses and also like that, all like that, also likewise what Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned in his book called Sawa'iq al-Mursala. There's a tremendous treatise that he, that he authored. It's called Al-Sawa'iq al-Mursala. Al-Jahmi al-Mu'atila. And another book is called Mukhtasul al-Sawa'iq by, by Ibn al-Qayyim. He inaugurated the book Mukhtasul al-Sawa'iq by saying the reasons of why people went astray and the origin and the foundation is because of two affairs which are considered a taghut. He said number one is called majaz, metaphoric meanings. The second one is misinterpreting verses. Taking verses of the Quran and twisting them in other than how Allah revealed it. So now let's go back to what we were mentioning. The minhaj of Ahl sunnah is that when you hear the ayat in the book of Allah, number one, you have ayat that are muhkam. What is the meaning of muhkam? The meaning of muhkam is this. Once you hear a verse, as soon as you hear it, it only carries one meaning. For example, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say Allah is one. Clear. Muhkam. There are ayat that are muhkam as soon as you hear it. Surah Al-Ikhlas is an example of it. Then you have ayat that are mutashabih, meaning that they carry numerous meanings. That Allah revealed that ayat that can carry various types of meanings all at once. Some of them being correct, some of them being incorrect. Incorrect as far as those who did not return back to what is muhkam, the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah. For any ayah that is mutashabih, he takes that ayah in order to attain the proper understanding of it. He returns it back to something that is muhkam. The muhkamat are either in the book of Allah or they're either in the sunnah message of Allah or they're in the statement of the sahaba. So when you now read a verse, you return it back to that resource that has been preserved. So you can attain the proper understanding of the verse so you won't go astray. So as a result of it, 
So you don't fall into what the Christians and the Jews fell into the past. Because they did not have this resource. They followed their desires. They did not turn the, the interpretation of those verses back to the book of Allah at that time. Or back to the authentic sunnah. Or to the statements of those who had also likewise took the ilm from the prophets and messengers. Which came as a result of it, they deviated. And Allah gave them a punishment. So like we said, the methodology when you hear a verse, and I'm going to give an example in the second khutbah. When a verse that's mutashabih, for example, like we said, the ayat that is mutashabih, it carries numerous meanings. Meanings that are correct, in which Allah has explained in his book, and, the authentic, and also in the authentic sunnah, and the companions and the message of Allah. Also gave the tafsir. And you'll find that our ayat in which Allah gives a verse that's comprehensive for numerous meanings all at once. There are other meanings that oppose it. Meaning those meanings that Allah did not mention in his book or in the sunnah of his messenger or the statement of any of the sahaba, we take those statements and throw them in the garbage. And I'm going to give an example of this in the next khutbah. May Allah preserve us all. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi wahdahu wa salatu wa salam ala man la nabiya ba'dahu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tamassaka bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-deen wa sallama tasliman kathira amma ba'd Keep in mind we're still talking about the second category of the Qur'an Allah has clearly said he has revealed verses that are muhkam and there are ayahs that are mutashabih verses that are muhkam meaning again the verse that, as soon as you hear it, it only necessitates one meaning. Then you have ayas that are mutashabih. When you hear it, they carry numerous meanings. They carry numerous, various types of meanings. What is the methodology in those ayat? When you hear ayat that's mutashabih, we return it to what is muhkam. Either in the book of Allah, or in the sunnah of the message of Allah, or the statement of the sahaba where they give the correct interpretation of those verses. So you can now understand the verses of how Allah wanted them to be understood and how the messenger wanted them to be understood. So there can't be 12 people sitting in the room. I understand this verse like this. I understand that verse to be this way. I understand that verse to be understood like this. Allah saved us from that, that nonsense, which comes as a result of it, division. Allah saved the Ummah Muhammadiyah from that. But like we said, the reason why the Muslims fell into it, because they want to defile their desires or something worldly or preserve their money or preserve their status. Not because it's not there. The resource has been preserved. All of the resources are preserved in the Kitab and Sunnah and the understanding of it. Whereas those prior from the previous nations don't have it anymore. Lost, altered, lost, totally changed. So now let's get back to an example. Allah revealed the ayah. For example, Allah Ta'ala says in his book about Jesus the son of Mary, وَكَلِمَتُهُ أَلْقَاهَا إِلَى مَرْيَمْ وَرُوحٌ مِنْ Allah Ta'ala says in his book that he said about the Christians, and speaking about Jesus the son of Mary, and just the word Jesus the son of Mary is the refutation against the Christians. Because everyone knows that for something in, in Islam, that if one has a child, and if of course it's a halal child, it's ascribed to the father. Allah describes Isa ibn Maryam, ascribed to his mother, to let you know he has no father. Allah is not his father. That's number one. Number two, Allah to what the Allah says in his book. He says his word that he cast into what kalimatu al ila Maryam. His word that he cast into Mary, wuruhun min, spirit from him. This is an ayat that's mutashabi. It carries numerous meanings. Focus on the preposition min, from, from him, spirit from him. Imagine right now, brothers and sisters, we had no resource to take, take these verses back to so we can attain a proper understanding of it. What will happen? This is what will happen. 
The Christians understood the ayat like this. First of all, min or from in the Arabic language breaks down to three categories. You have min al ibtidaiya You have min al tabidiya And you have min al bayaniya You have min, something, the, the meaning of min, the first category, is something that it started or was originated from something. It was started and it was originated from something. That's the first category. Then you have the second meaning of min, of from, or the preposition min, which means it's broken off from something or some of something. Then you have the third, which is called min al bayaniya from of something giving more clarification and making it clear. Those three categories is the meaning of the word min in the Arabic language. Play. Let's now just imagine right now we have no resource to take anything back to. Let's apply what happened to the Christians, because they have no resource. The Christian understood men to be the second category. As that happened during the time of the Messenger of Allah, when the mushrikun of the Christians, they said that the meaning of spirit from him means a spirit that was broken off from Allah, meaning Jesus is a part of Allah, or as they say, Jesus is a part of God. Some of them say Jesus is Lord. Some of them say Jesus is the third of three. Some of them say Jesus is the son of Allah. All of them are what? Based upon this ideology that Jesus is a part of God. So they interpreted what? Meant to be tab'idiyah. Something that was broken off from something or part of something. Now let's go back to those who have been preserved with the perfect understanding that has the resource to return it back to. In order to what? Attain the proper understanding of the ayah. Allah to be with the ayah put in his book. And another ayah, which like we said, the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, return with the shabih, back to muhkam. We made that clear. The muhkam can either break down to this book, the sunnah, the statement of the sahaba. That's the muhkamat. Any verse that could be have all these different meanings, we turn it back to those three. So Allah Ta'ala says in this book, إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَى عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمْ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابِ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فِيَكُونَ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Verily the example of Jesus, the son of Mary, is like the example of Adam. Allah created the spirit and created his body from dirt and clay. And then he blew the spirit and what? He blew the spirit in which he created and it was not a part of Allah. Meaning, the spirit was originated and it started from Allah. Then Allah commanded that created spirit to be put inside the body. Jesus, the son of Mary, is the sim- similar to the example of Adam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clarifying in another ayah that the meaning of men of from is the first category. Meaning the soul in which Allah originated and started and he commanded Jibreel, take the word in which Allah created Jesus by, which is be. Allah created Jesus by the word be. The Christians say that Jesus is the word. No, Allah is saying that he was created by the word be, meaning his soul was created. Allah said be, his soul was, it started and it was originated from Allah, a soul that Allah created. Then the word in which Allah created the soul of Isa by, Jibreel came to Maryam and put it in her womb. So the meaning of men is not the second category of something that was broken off. Allah clarified in his book that the meaning of the correct interpretation of the ayah is that the soul was created by Allah and it was started and it was originated, which was the first category. And Allah clarified the meaning and also the sunnah of the message of Allah. He clarified the proper interpretation of the verse, meaning it was the soul that Allah created by the word be. Jesus, the son of Mary, was not the word. He was created by the word be, and he was not the word. Allah created the soul, and he originated it and put it inside of the womb of Mary. The Christians did not return their eyes and their verses back to what is muhkam. They don't have it. So everyone is open now to interpret it how they want now. 
And that's the reason why they fell into kufr. That's the reason why they fell into deviance and they fell into also disbelief. Misinterpretation of the verses. Not returning them back to what is muhkam because they don't have it now. Their book is altered and their resource to return back, to return those verses back so they can attain the proper understanding is also lost. Why? So that understands why would a person now return back to a way in which their book has been distorted, Resources have been distorted and to now untain the proper understanding of verses been what? Lost. When if you stuck to the kitab and the sunnah, minhaj al-salafi, Allah has saved you now from a book has been altered. The sunnah of the authentic prof, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the, the authentic sunnah has been preserved and the understanding has been preserved. Why would I now want to go back to that way? Why? When you and your own scholars say that the book has been altered, been altered and changed. So why would I want to go back to a way that now it is clearly established that your book has been altered and you have no resource to return back to to order to attain the proper understanding of those verses so we can know and understand the verses of how Allah wanted them to be interpreted. So now you see what happened to the Christians. They took the wrong understanding of the verse. They fell into disbelief as a result of it. Whereas Allah to with the Alawat preserved us. Preserved it by saying no. The meaning of the ayat, spirit from him. Means the spirit Allah started and originated. It's not part of Allah. And it wasn't part of God, as they say. A soul that started with Allah, Allah originated and started it and put it in Mary. And they say, idafatun iktasabat tashrif. And it's also a connection when Allah said spirit from him that he wanted to show there was something special about that spirit that he created, meaning that he created the soul without a father. It's showing the high status of that particular thing and that Allah is able to do all things that he could create in a manner that he wants to. So now, what happened to the Christians, they fell into what is mutashabih. For the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah, we say any ayah that's mutashabih, we take it back to what is muhkam. Either in the book of Allah, or in the Sunnah and the Messenger of Allah, or the understanding of the Sahaba. Also, in regards, now I'm going to give an example of how what takes place these days. Look to what happened to the nation of Islam. They took the Quran, came with a bunch of verses misinterpreting them. Farrakhan says in a book, وَنَحْشُرُوا الْمُجْنِمِينَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ زُرْقَى we, gather the, we will gather the criminals on the day of resurrection who are blue-eyed. Seems like he got a wedge. Seems like he has an aim at this. He has some delil. He does? Really? So based upon this verse, the eye of the might man is the devil. See? I used a verse from the book of Allah. Clearly justifies it. See? That's the reason why, brothers and sisters, this is the reason why I said you learn this methodology. So number one, let's go back to the book of Allah. Let's go back to the Sunnah message of Allah. Let's go back to the statement of Sahaba, Farrakhan. So if you look into the Sunnah, if you look to also the statement of Sahaba, none of them said that the verse means the white, that the blue-eyed is the white man. None of them. Not one. So are we going to take your interpretation or the interpretation of, the, of those who are the best of creation at the head of them, the message of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam? And if you look to the tafsir of the ulama, they say that the meaning of the ayat is that on the day of resurrection, every human being will be in a state of horror and fright to the point where their eyes will change color. That's the meaning of the verse. Absolutely makes sense. That everyone will be in a state of horror and fright on the day of resurrection to the point where the eyes of some of the people will be turning blue. It's not talking about the white man. It's talking about every human being that walked this earth. Everyone will be scared. Black, white, Arab, non-Arab, Asian, Asian, African, everyone will be scared. To the point where their eyes will turn blue or change color. Because everybody will be extremely scared. Doesn't mean a white man. You lied upon the law in this message of Farrakhan. You lied. And look to what happened as a result of him misinterpreting verses. He led thousands of people astray. Thousands. And they're still astray. 
If you want to go millions, you can even say millions. All because of this interpretation of verses. Taking the verses and twisting them to his own meaning. That's why those that they follow with is what? Muhkam, they will receive a reward. Let's go back to Surah Al-Fatiha now. For those who cling to what is Muhkam, they will receive a reward. Going back to Surah Al-Fatiha again. And those who follow Mutashabi, what is Mutashabi, those ayahs and those verses that can mean numerous meanings, and not returning it back to what is Muhkam, they will receive a what? A punishment, and they will receive it even, they can even enter the hellfire as a result of it. And that's what happened to the people of the past, and that will happen to the deviant sects from the Muslims if they don't what? Return back to what is the hot. Is it clear now? I think it's clear, inshallah. So as to let everyone know that the whole Quran has all been generalized in Surah Al-Fatiha. Because Allah Ta'ala says, guide us to the straight path. And I said last week, when, a mess, when Allah Ta'ala says, Sirat al-Mustaqeem, he's letting us know that the, the path of truth, number one in Surah Al-Fatiha, is only one. There is only one path to Allah. This ayat right here is also mutashabi. Meaning it has a lot of meanings. Some of them are correct. Some of them of which the people of falsehood come with also is, is rejected. What's the meaning of Sirat al-Mustaqeen? You'll find some of them say that it's Islam. Some of Ahl al-In for the Mufassirun say it's, it's the Prophet, it's following the message of Allah and his Sunnah. Another one say clinging to what Abu Bakr and Umar was upon. All of them are correct. What is now and what a person will come and desire to say, well, I understand it to be this. It's Christianity. I understand it to be democracy. I understand it to be Buddhism. Tayyip, let's take your statement. Let's now return it back to what is muhkam. Is this statement that you said accepted or rejected? Now let's go back to the authentic sunnah statement of the Sahaba. None of them said Buddhism. None of them said Christianity. None of them said this. None of them said that. So those meanings you're coming with is what? Unacceptable. But that one path, all of it is Islam, of course. All of it is following the Messenger of Allah. All of it is following Minhaj Salafi because it says in the tafsir, clinging to what Abu Bakr and Umar was upon. All of that's correct. And that's another science that I will talk about next week, which is called Khilaf Tanawar, not Khilaf Tadad. Where Allah in His infinite wisdom re revealed ayat that can carry numerous meanings. Numerous meanings in which the Messenger of Allah and Ibn Abbas and other than them gave as clarification to let you know how what? How those ayat can contain a lot of benefits just by reciting one verse. But those other meanings, interpretations, we also, we what? We show it to Kitab, Sunnah, Aqwal, Sahaba to see whether those statements are accepted or rejected. If those cling to those people, cling to that methodology, you will receive a reward, which is Targhib. If you deviate, you follow mutashabih, not returning it back to his muhkam, you will receive a punishment. And that's what's been mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha. This is the reason why we tell the Muslims, all of us in general, Allah clearly says, Ihdina, guide us to the straight path. We know that the word huda, you're making dua to Allah, please Allah, inspire me to learn beneficial knowledge. Inspire me to take knowledge at the proper, also likewise give me tawfiq, to attain the proper knowledge at the hands of the proper people, likewise. Because a lot of people are deprived of that ni'mah today, a lot. A lot of the Muslims have been deprived of learning knowledge at the hands of the proper people. Not only they have not been inspired to go attain it, because a lot of us are know-it-alls. I know it all, I don't need to study. Or, Allah has now de deprived them of taking knowledge from the hands of the proper people. And you are making dua to Allah in every rak'ah. Please, Allah, inspire me to educate myself. Inspire me and also protect me from taking knowledge at the hands of the improper people who can misguide me. And we'll explain the next acts or the next categories next week. And I hope that everyone benefited to know why this surah is the greatest surah in the Quran. And, and, and also likewise, if someone last week understood from me that Surah Al-Fatiha is the first Surah that was revealed in the Quran, 
That is not what I was saying at all. What I said about Surah Al-Fatiha, it is the first Surah in the Quran, as we know. I did not say it was the first Surah revealed. I did not say that. That the first Surah in the Quran is what, everyone? Surah Al-Fatiha. The last Surah in the Quran is what? Surah Al-Nas. So the fact, whoever understood that I said that the first Surah that was revealed was Surah Al-Fatiha, that if you understood that from me, then I'm sorry, I apologize. I retract it. I'm wrong, which I have no problem in doing. And wallahi, brothers and sisters, I want everyone to take a lesson from this. Every time a person is sincere and they say off their tongue, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I don't care if it's in kitab, in sunnah, or amongst your family, amongst your wives, or your husbands. Wallahi, this is something that is experienced from even, we're not going to say like Muhammad, you see, but anyway, <laughs> Those who I've seen, what we see with our own eyes. Where it's easy for a person to say, I'm wrong, Allah raises you. I don't care if that's in key. That's, that's pertaining to the book of Allah and even amongst your families. Make your tongue, make it moist to say when you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was wrong. The more I've seen the people who have said that out of their mouths, the more that I've seen Allah raises their status more and more and more and more and more and more. It go higher and higher and higher. The people who's never stayed, they never wrong. Justify everything. Everything's justified. Everyone I've seen that has never, never wanted to retract. Arrogant. Trying to justify. Whether it be in those who, when it gets kitab sunnah, you see what happened to them. They deviated. Deviated. And those who you see even on the social level amongst your families, those could never admit when they're wrong. Never. They're always saying, yeah, I did that, but you did this and such and such. Or they try to done that, water it down. Why I got to apologize to you? Who are you? You see that their status with the law goes low and low and low until they're humiliated. What raises a person to say, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I apologize. That was out of line. That was unacceptable. I should not have did that. That was inappropriate. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, if you get yourself acclimated to saying these words out of your mouth, Allah will raise you. He will raise your status. Shaitan puts us our minds the opposite. If I say I'm wrong, then that means that my status is going to go down. No, it isn't. Wallah is going to get raised. If you don't see it now, you'll see it eventually. Allah will raise you. The people who will never say apologetic ever, those are the people you see their status goes down, down, down. Here in America, we've been cultivated upon us. I'm right in everything. I don't care what you say. I'm right. You're wrong. Whether it be on the, in, in our religion or whether it be in, in between our families on a social level. Wrong. So brothers and sisters, please adopt this methodology of knowing, of educating our, our, ourselves, and also likewise acclimating our tongues to say when we're wrong, we're wrong. I'm sorry. That was, in, that was, that was incorrect. I apologize. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, I've seen people who's apologetic, and I've seen people, thousand, thousand cases, they can never say out of their mouth, I'm wrong. Never. Mm -mm. Man, saying I'm wrong out my tongue is like... It's, 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 <laughs> Saying wrong off their tongue is like, you can wait forever. They never saying it. And those are the people usually you see Allah humiliates in some type of way. And people who's apologetic constantly, I'm sorry. Akhi, what do you want me to do? I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sincerely sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. That was wrong. Please accept my apology. Allah raises you. Go up. Higher. That's the religion, ya ma'ashal ikhwa. Humbleness. Humbling yourself when you know you're wrong. So we say we continue the explanation of Surah Al-Fatiha next week, inshallah, bi for the other categories. But keep in mind, those are the second categories that return back to Surah Al-Fatiha. Was Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Subhanaka Allahum wa bihamdak. Wa ashadu la ilahi la ant. Wa astaghfirka wa tubi ilayk wa akhiru da'wana. أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة